Hello and welcome. I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. I'm excited because today we have a brand new mod out for the Crusader Kings 2 game. It's called Elder Kings, based off of the Morrowinds, Skyrim, um, basically the whole Bethesda software, um, you know, Elder Scrolls universe. And so, very excited to do this Let's Play. I'm going to be playing, um, this is mostly blind, I haven't really had a chance to review too much about the game, but um, that'll give us a great first impression. Let's take a look at the world first. Looks, we, looks like we have two bookmarked starting dates, both in the year, uh, one's in the year 3370, one's in 3750. It's quite a big difference, 400, almost 400 years. This is awesome. We've got Somerset Isle. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at, uh, there's Morrowind over here. So if you've been playing Skyrim at all, you'll be familiar with this ar these areas. I love when, when mods do this. Look at this map. Look at this thing. It's huge. It's a brand new custom map for the game. It's massive. And uh, I think that's awesome. Mm, look at Independent Realms. <coughs> Lots of counts. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Different religions. Cultures. Woo. It's awesome. All right, so what are we going to play as? Oh, geez. Um, a Republic? No. No, let's not do that. Ooh, new sound effects, too. All right, let's do this. Um, I don't want to start as a count because I want to have some fun early in the game, but I don't want to start as a king or an emperor level. So we'll just we'll find a we'll, let's find a duke. And mm, where do we want to pick? It'd be nice if there's a little random button somewhere. Hmm. How about we just start with um, somebody in the middle? Gosh, there's so much map to look at. I just I don't even know what to pick. All right, I like coastal provinces, so I'm going to go with this guy. Yeah, let's be one of the, the... I can't recall what they're called off the top of my head now, that race. That race. We're going to play as this guy. We're the Patru. And it turns on hints by default when you first turn the game on. Okay. Now, I am running in parallel to the Elder Kings mod, my, uh, my minor mods, which are uh, keyboards, keyboard shortcuts, and interface adjust. So when I open up things like my uh, the advisor screen, it, it doesn't open up right here. It actually opens up over here. There should be a link to that down in the description below. But um, this is my very first time watching the looking at the game, so I'm going to be looking at it just like you. So let's see what we can figure out what to be different. Um, looks like we have an issue with the wrong air. I am a patru. My religion is hissed. All right, that's cool. Ooh, look at all these combat modifiers that we get. So we don't actually have to have any real traits to get combat modifiers. In fact, it looks like we don't have any traits right now. Oh, no, we do. They're over here. Interesting. So they've been moved. Looks like most interface is pretty similar. Let's see if this changed at all. No, nope, nothing in our dynasty yet. Same type family tree interface. Got a realm. Nobody really likes us very much. And vassals. Yeah, everyone doesn't like me. Why don't you like me? I'm a nice guy. Slob versus proud. Interesting. I have not heard of this slob trait. Where is that? So this guy thinks that uh, apparently I am proud and he must be a slob. What is slob? Slobs don't care about their appearance and are often disliked by the people. Living in a filthy home and rarely washing does, however, <laughs> give an ever so slight boost to their general health, surprisingly. So, all right, that's cool. I love new traits. Um, it's very similar. It reminds me to the uh, like the Prince and the Thane mod. Tons of new traits. A lot of fun to play with mods like that. Uh, both Argonian. That's that. That's right. That's the name of our race. Looks like this is, uh, the Elder Kings is still in beta, so it looks like they've got debug info still on right now. And that's okay. Opinion of no character. It's probably just a starting of the game issue. Ooh, I can't wait to go through that. Let's hold off on that for a moment, though. All right, so, Master Assassin. All right, cool. This character is a master in the art of assassination, and few survive his poisons and blades. Tons of martial and intrigue, low stewardship, and increased assassination. So that reminds me, yeah, it reminds me a lot of the, like, the traits you'd see playing as an Argonian. They, they were very good thieves and archers and like, like sneaky type guys. 
Argonians, uh, lizard race from the swamps of Argonia. They have a natural immunity to all kinds of disease and potions. And rely on stealth, martial intrigue, minus diplomacy learning. Tons of health and fertility. Nice. And apparently this is one of the things that's increasing our combat in Marsh and Black Marsh over here. Because we're Argonian. Let's see, do they trade? Ah, okay, so that's how they, fact, that's how they give us these uh, combat modifiers, is that they have the mod creators apparently modified some of the base attributes, or the base traits. Like, Zealous is normal. That's, that's normally in the game. But they've added some extra damage modifiers, like Pursuit, Retreat, Damage, and Flanking. Proud has some trait modifiers as well. Looks like, pr I, I guess, probably every single trait has a couple minor adaptations from the regular game. All right, so that's enough looking at us. We do need to get married, though. Uh, no heir, title loss, one title can be created. I'm guessing that the, the normal feudal hierarchy system is the same. Um, let's check that. We've probably got... Yeah, so this is a kingdom. Kingdom of soul rest. Below that we've got duchies. And then I guess they're called territories instead of counties. So this is the territory of Chase Point. And same type thing as before, where you can make something a capital somehow. Um, we've got, you know, sub-vassals to the counties, or territories, rather. Uh, how much does it cost to build? Looks like the same cost to build as normal, regular um, Crusader Kings 2. Looks like the same basic tax revenue from a, uh, from a castle. Slightly different from a bishopric. A bishopric is normally... Eight. And let's see if we can find a city somewhere. Do we have cities or cities in this game? There's one. And that's a little bit reduced as well. Cities are normally 12. All right, so that's cool. And what else we got? Looks like uh, light infantry are the same. Pikemen, archers, heavy infantry. Mages. Cool. So instead of horse archers, they've replaced horse archers with mages. And I would be willing to bet that the, um, let's check this. So we raise the men up. I bet that the attack values got changed around too. No, that looks like, a, that's about right. They might be the same, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm positive, you know, for mages they would have changed it. Just because, I mean, it's a t totally different unit, but. Um, all right. Let's look at the next screen. I'm probably going to spend this entire first video just looking at stuff. Hopefully this is what you're looking for, because that's what I'm excited about. This is a first impression type review. We'll get some gameplay in soon, I assure you. But um, there's just so many new toys. It's like Christmas morning. All right, let's check out the council actions. All right, so all of a sudden, all right away, you can see you've got one extra chancellor, or one extra council member. Instead of one, two, three, four, five, we've got six. So we've got a chancellor, a marshal, stewards, five master, court priest. Those are all the same. But now we've also got a court wizard. So let's see what we have. Improved diplomatic relations. That uh, looks like the exact same event as regular Crusader Kings 2. Same with fabricate claims. So dissent. Slander. Nice. Use your chancellor to tarnish another lord's reputation. Chancellor tarnishes the lord's reputation. Chancellor reveals a shocking secret. Discovers ancestry. Hmm, wonder what that means. And necromancy. Where could we place him? Okay, so we have to place him in a foreign court. Can't be in the land that we control. That's neat. Probably going to use that soon just for fun. Um, in fact, why don't we just... Let, oh, well, mm, no, I'm not going to do it yet. I want to I know everything. I need to learn everything. Suppress revolts looks the same. Train troops looks about the exact same. Military tech the same. Rally rebels. Send your marshal to another lord's lands to rally the dissidents against them. Local revolt risk increased. That's, a, that's such a cool thing. I wish that was in the base game. Yeah, so like you can actually just send your guy somewhere and have him increase the revolt risk in a county. That's cool. Awesome. Um, he could get discovered, and he could also get cornered by a city guard. So I'm guessing if he's discovered, he'd probably get imprisoned or piss the guy off. If he's cornered, he probably gets killed. Not sure, though. We'll find out. Collect taxes looks the same. I bet I'm, I'm starting to think that the first three are pretty much the same to the base game. Economy tech looks the same. Ooh, survey province. Cool. Send your steward on a mission to survey a province within your domain. Highly 
Iliad ruins, Duomer, Moonstone, precious metal deposits. So you can find a bunch of cool stuff. Looks like there's two down there that are not currently... Um, they're not defined. There's one there that says 1.74% yearly and 2.21% yearly. That's probably just because it's beta, but um, I'm sure that that'll get added in later. And then, of course, peasants attack the steward, which is interesting. <laughs> right? Scheming looks about the same. Spy network is... Uh, what? It doesn't actually describe what it does. Huh. Sabotage research. That's new. Send your spy master to sabotage your enemy's research. Technology growth rate minus 49%, and he couldn't get caught. And sabotage economy. Lowers tax modifier. Awesome. That's sweet. Convert populace looks about the same. Um, improve relations looks the same. Cure disease. All right, that's neat. So disease resistance. I'm not really sure where you'd see the disease uh, like chance, but I'm guessing if you have an outbreak of some kind in the territory that you can, uh, you can use that trait, or use that counselor action to cure it. And tend the wounded, morale of armies. So, okay, cool. Study technology looks the same. Cultural tech, root out the cabals. Send your court wizard to root out dark cabals, or cables. Necromancers and other evil groups from your provinces. So it reduces revolt risk. That's kind of similar to the uh, train tr um, suppress revolts thing. A little bit different, but similar. And dabble in the arts. Have your court wizard prepare his regents for a powerful spell. This will add a portion of your court mage's magicka to your own and may unlock, dependent upon the skill of your court mage, new spells in the spell book. We get a spell book? Where's our spell book? I need to see this. That is so cool. Where's the spell book? How do I find it? Show me, show me, show me. I want to know where it is. Oh, gosh, that's exciting. Where is it? Is it up here? What? Favor. So we got wealth, prestige, favor. Seems to have pa re is, uh, replaced piety. Domain, score. I'm, I'm betting there's some link somewhere. It's probably in here, maybe. Open spell book, I bet. Open minor title decisions. Open. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be in here. So it's going to be like your... Uh, I might not have a spell book yet. Maybe because I'm not a caster or something. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at the laws. So next up, we've got um, same, same mostly type looking laws. Yeah, same succession type stuff. Looks like this isn't a complete overhaul of the, uh, you know, the, of the, the laws or anything here. But we do have army training. That's different. Your levies and retinues receive little, if any, direct training. They are simply farmers and city dwellers given arms without much instruction on how to use them. So we have low morale, but a quick reinforcement rate. That makes sense. So because they're untrained, you can, you can get them quickly. I could increase it to organized training. And when enlisted men are pressed into your armies, they receive basic drill instructions. I don't see anything below, which makes me think it's just a, it reduces the penalty of morale and also slows the reinforcement. And yeah, yep, and that's the opposite. So organized Higher morale, but then they, they reinforce slower. So you kind of have a choice, it looks like. But you've got to move it up one level at a time. Interesting. Okay. Take a look at technology. Yeah, this looks the exact same as base. Let's just check some of these numbers. Looks like mages benefit from the bows technology. Light armor um, is going to affect mage defense as well. And then the same base units. That's cool. It'd be kind of neat if there was maybe a little bit more of an overhaul to some of the like the named units and things. That might happen later on in the beta, I'm not sure. <coughs> Same thing for trade, temple. Ooh, I wonder if we get new buildings. I bet we do. Yeah, we'll have to look at that soon. Construction, that's all about the same. And that actually looks like it got buffed. Normally, if I remember correctly, Noble Customs goes... 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, and now it's going 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, which is a more logical progression to me, but um, it's not that actual way in the current game in Crusader Kings 2 itself. And it looks like all three of those got buffed, so that's cool. Majesty is normally, I think, 10% at the first level, so this is reduced a little bit in the beginning, but then buffed toward the end. Cool. I love changes. I don't really even care what I'm playing as long as there's changes. 
Ooh, and this unlocks buildings. That's different. Cool. All right. And what do we have for this? Any special retinues? Yeah, we can get a, a mage retinue. I want to know what mages do. Mercenaries are apparently really inexpensive. I'm guessing maybe gold is much more valuable, perhaps. And these are very, very small, small mercenary groups. Maybe that's why. But, um, okay. Oh, I love that. Look at that. So they're called the, uh, like the Fighters Guild. Argonia Fighters, Fighters Guild. That's awesome. Looks like we've got normal kill plots because we're the heir. Uh, let's check these out. Minor title decisions. So there's no condition. This is just in a... What does this do? The following important decisions are available. Okay, so that's what it did. Okay, I get it. So by opening the minor titles missions like decision, it's, it's removed all my other options and I only have this. And so one of them is closed minor title missions. So this lets me get back out of that menu. But I can also see potential candidates to appoint to a minor title. Let's try that. The following individuals have potential for appointment to a minor position at court. These show potential in diplomacy. All right. Neat. So this is like an organization system. I bet if I looked at these characters, they meet some criteria like looks like probably the minimum is they have to have at least eight diplomacy to to show up in the diplomacy score and these ones probably have to have maybe maybe this is the same number like eight or ten or something like that we have no people who meet the stewardship minimum and learning I'm surprised there isn't like an intrigue option as well and what do I and I, I bet if I just click off on any any of these it'll actually get rid of the menu so this doesn't actually do anything. It just lets you look at stuff and organize it. And that's a pretty neat trait, or a neat, neat feature of the game. We can also check minor title holders. The following individuals hold minor position. Courtiers with position. See tooltip. OK, so there is no tooltip. I'm guessing that's because we just don't have anyone pointed yet, maybe? Yeah. We probably actually have to need, like, give them minor titles somehow figure that out later so let's close that yeah let's test it. yeah you can just click back in and out open employment list employ a chancellor employ a spy master interesting so you maybe you don't change it from here is that hot is that oh what's all this all right we'll have to look at that later I guess maybe you don't change it oh you know what no don't have the character modifier employment timer Oh, okay. Employ a chancellor. That doesn't change my chancellor. That is a uh, like a recruitment type decision. If I employ a chancellor, a random courtier will be generated. It costs me one gold. And I bet if I did it, if I didn't do it at the very start of the game, it probably cost more than one gold. I bet one gold's the minimum, and it's based off your annual income. Which holy smokes, my income is nothing. Why is my income so low? Oh, I bet I know. It's probably because I'm over my limit, minus 100% from oversized domain. That's why. That's probably why it's only one gold, too. All right, so we can hire basically all five types. Instead of just presenting a random courtier, like a holy man or a noble, you're able to, to specify what type you want. That's cool. Then you got a debutante, a retainer, hires a knight, adopt an orphan. Okay, so adopt an orphan from a local orphanage to continue dynastical name after you have perished. So I guess if you have no heir and you're over 60, then you can hire just just adopt an orphan. And summon the dark brotherhood, 2500 gold. And they need to fix that tooltip. So, cool. All right, let's get out of this menu and check out the next one. Commune with the hist. What is that? 55% chance that I become one with the Hist for a time. 25% that the Hist grant me a great grift. 20% chance of the sap was too much. So I can't be infirm or incapable. And it just costs me money and I can't have tons of piety. It's calling it piety, but up here it's listed as favor. I, I bet by the end of the... By the end of the beta, they'll have these tooltips lined up so that it says favor in both places. 
All right, so we're probably going to do that soon. I'll probably do that event. Form the Knights of the Whispering something. Takes a lot more money than I have. Friends and Rivals. This is actually a... Uh, the Friends and Rivals mod is separate. I, I've seen it before. But what this does is it lets you see, like, who you're friends with. Like, if you have a lover and all that. It doesn't show anything because it just started. Display Dragonborn. Here is the Dragonborn and the known descendants of past Dragonborns. The known Dragonborn is nothing. So we don't know who the Dragonborn is. All right, cool. What's next? No factions. Nothing really to look at for religion. And um, let's see. How can I... I don't want to give away one of these titles, so let's actually play the game a little bit. Let's pick an ambition. Um, get married, fall in love. Reign for 10 years. These look pretty similar to the base game. I'm going to go ahead and pick get married. And... And then let's see if we can arrange a marriage. Maybe if I find someone with high stewardship, then I can uh, hold on to both of my titles and not, not lose one of them. Oh, and before I do that, let's go ahead and do that one thing that cost one gold. Hopefully that doesn't kill me and end the game. And we can create a title. Domain, domain's too big. All right, so we'll try to get married. And I should probably do all this. Okay, so I'm looking at the diplomacy menu. These people are yellow, so I can attack them. Let's see what di what kind of a casus belli I have. We can do an embargo war on him. What kind of war can we declare on you? An embargo. How about you? Embargo. Huh. So the only casus belli that are available there are embargo wars. looks like, unlike the base game where you've got like holy wars, you can't just attack people. It looks like perhaps maybe we need to fabricate claims or there, maybe there's some other mechanic I need to learn about. Huh. Alright, well I should probably let the game tick a little bit before I start worrying about declaring war. But, um, well, I like to play very aggressively, so uh, what title is it that we can create? The Duchy of Soul Rest. Interesting. Do I have a titular title right now? The tribe. Yeah, I have a titular. I have a titular duchy. That's why I'm allowed to have vassals beneath me. I was gonna say, if I'm just a count, I'm not a do. I'm, I don't have a dukedom yet. Then how come I have vassal counts? But that's why. I have a titular title. So okay. All right. Before I let the game play, I'm going to um, break this video up just so it's not too long. And in the next video, we're gonna get married. Employ our chancellors, get them uh, our council working, and then start playing the actual game. So this is a quick little first look. Hopefully you enjoy the excitement and you know everything as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, please do subscribe if you want to stay up to date on new releases. And you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.